Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for coming tonight. Please make sure you can see past the camera, which is going to turn around and photograph people so you can't hide. Please come down. Good evening and thank you for coming. My name's Judith Downs. I'm a director of the Spinal Research Institute and I will be your MC this evening. We have a number of short presentations and then there will be lots more time for you to talk. It was lovely to see everyone greeting old friends and getting to know new people. I'd like to acknowledge the Gadigal people of the Aura Nation, the traditional custodians of this land, and pay my respects to the elders, past, present and emerging. Today we're thrilled to be presenting the Spinal Cord Research Hub. The Hub has been developed over the last two years as a global research tool. How appropriate that we can launch it on the eve of the 2018 International Spinal Cord Society Scientific Meeting, the ISCOS meeting. Like all Australians, we've abbreviated the name of the Hub to SCORE. SCORE is the brainchild of Associate Professor Doug Brown. Many of you know Doug and have worked with him and know how passionate he is about improving the lives of people living with a spinal cord injury. Doug's not just passionate, he's also incredibly learned in this area. He's the former director of the Victorian Spinal Cord Service, the immediate past president of the International Spinal Cord Society, and is recognised internationally for his contribution to the field. Doug has led and been involved in numerous research studies on spinal cord injury. His frustration with the collaboration challenges facing researchers and the delay in research results reaching those li living with spinal cord injury led him to establish SRI and SCORE. Please welcome Associate Professor Doug Brown. Thank you, Judith. <clears throat> we can now get down to some real business. We uh, are here. Thank you for coming. It's very good to see so many people. I don't know why you have to be so crowded up at the back. I'm sure you can move forward a little bit and get a bit of breathing space. Um, it's terrific to have you here because today um, is really a milestone for the Spinal Research Institute, uh, launching the, the online platform. And I, we hope that it will become a milestone in collaborative research for clinical um, work, studies in uh, the realm of spinal cord injuries to ultimately come up with collaborative projects that will give us definitive answers that will be translated into life-changing uh, things for spinal cord injury people to enable them to uh, have a better quality of life because we know that the people with spinal cord injury on the whole are not as actively involved in the community as, as they could be if some things were changed for the better for them. So that's, that's the real thing that we're on about today. So um, I think what, uh, what many people don't always realise is that this is a, a process that brought us today and it's a process of ideas um, that people have been talking about and we've had workshops at ISCOS now for the last six years and the uh, Rick Hansen Institute had a big Praxis uh, conference a couple of years ago and the real theme that's been developing is a recognition that we work together more effectively than we work together in small, little, isolated groups. So that is where we're at now. We're, we're at a time, I think, where there's a recognition that, that collaboration in research uh, is going to have an impact that not collaborating does not have. And we, we've all seen thousands of papers <coughs> that have been produced, there would be, you know, two and a half thousand papers produced with spinal cord injury if you do a search every year, and yet what change is there for the lives of people with spinal cord injury? And most of those studies, if you look at them, are quite small. Uh, they involve one or two units and um, maybe only one unit. The numbers are never significant. And, and so that's, that's the challenge that, that we face is to, uh, to, to develop something that's better. And the Spinal Research Institute was set up with some seed funding from the TAC 
and uh, to develop infrastructure for research. And it's been supported by the Shine On Foundation, the Ian Potter Foundation, uh, IOOF, and, and other people to get us to where we're at today. So I think it's quite important to realise that this is, this is not a, a, a magic thing that happened. It's something that's, that's uh, involved quite a few people. And um, the software developers, the e-research at Melbourne University under Professor Sinnott have been extremely helpful and uh, we've, you know, we're, they've made it happen where we are now. But we also had a, another group of people, some of whom are here, who are being um, advisors to that, that process and they are senior researchers from around the world and um, they have advised as a, as a hub advisory group uh, the development of it and have helped with testing of it and so we really are um, uh, at a stage where we can say that this is not just a brainchild of us, this is now a brainchild of other people, other people have contributed. So what you see is the beginning of what we hope will be a lot of other people contributing as, as it develops further because you know IT never stands still. Yeah, what we are at today will be the beginning and tomorrow will be different, better, more improved, hopefully not so many functions that you can never cope with it, um, but that would be my problem, not perhaps yours. Um, but anyhow, that's where we're at. So it's very important to know that hub, uh, hub advisory group is 18 people from 11 countries around the world, uh, nine countries, and uh, for two years they've been working with this project. So as I said, it takes a bit of time, but they put in a lot of work and, you know, it's not always easy because having international conferences with them uh, in many different time zones, sometimes people have to get up uh, early or, or, or work late and do these things. and. They have uh, been tremendously helpful in that and it's uh, uh, really something to be grateful to them for. And the other group that's made it possible have been the staff of the Spinal Research Institute and, and I'm very fortunate to have worked with uh, some fantastic people and you'll probably meet some of them here, Christine Hendry, Emma Pelleg, Gemma Altmaier, uh, Deidre Mori, Marnie Graco, other people who have really you know, made things happen. Uh, not just doing a job, uh, doing a job that they really put themselves into and really understand the goal is to help people with spinal cord injury. So it's not about us, it's not about the institute, it's really the end goal that we are focused on. And so they've been terrific and I, I'm sure you'll have the opportunity to hear from some of them and to meet them uh, today and certainly make, make it possible. If you see someone, uh, one of them, go and say hello. That would be great. So we're, we're really, I think, um, getting to the stage where um, what I need to say is that what we need you to go away from this is thinking about how research can go from small local pilot studies that come up with that, you know, you've seen that end of the study line, the conclusion in so many scientific papers. The results look promising, more research needed. You know, uh, trending towards but not statistically significant, more research needed, but the research never happens. And so I think we, the, the process of this online collaboration hub is that people should start logging in, joining up, signing up, putting on their profile, then start to do chats working about, I've got this good idea, or we're developing a protocol for this, or we've done this pilot study, and this is what it looks like. And then starting to collaborate with other people who say, yeah, I'm interested in that. We could do that. We could be part of that too. And that's really going to be important. It doesn't happen now. Uh, the, the studies that people do, it depends on people who have met at this meeting perhaps, but they may not be at the next meeting or the one after. So you may not really easily develop a good group. You might have four, three, five, seven in your study. Seven doesn't get enough people usually to have significant outcomes in the three years that the grant goes for. And the grant doesn't actually cover the fact that you may need to be working with other people. And sometimes if you want to work with other people, they may also need to get a grant. So we are hoping that people will now start coming together and saying, we need to actually say that what we can do isn't good enough. We can do that pilot study. Having got that, we have to go beyond that. And to be able to go beyond that, we need already to know people. So when we're doing the pilot study, even that can be something that can be starting to inspire people. So it's very important that uh, uh, at the end of this, all those who do clinical research in spinal cord injuries, look at uh, getting themselves signed up on the program. And that will be possible uh, for you to do here today. So 
Yes, the, the, the concept is really that people get together, connect, share, collaborate, work together, respect each other, um, and, and that's a very important part because uh, if you're going to collaborate with other people, spread your data out, as it were, your results, your ideas, uh, you have to be able to respect people uh, and know you're respected and trusted. So it's very important that this collaborative protocol, uh, this online hub, will have that as a major theme. Trust and mutual respect so that we can actually stop defending our patch, which is too small to do any good, and become a bit more open. It doesn't mean people have to be irresponsible, but people have to develop working together. So it's very important that people here today talk to each other and meet someone you haven't met to start to know people and not just meet the people you know coming from your centre. And that should be what happens at ISCOS. And people often say that, don't they, that conferences are not, it's not just a scientific presentation that's important, it's the networking, the people you meet. That later on, when you've got a problem, you can start to deal with. We want that to happen not once a year or whenever you get together in two or three years, you get back to the next ISCOS meeting, but throughout the year for collaborative research. So, you know, it's a bit, a bit strange that I'm here talking about it and that I have this idea that people have worked on because um, when it comes to the internet and Wi-Fi and all of those things, you know, if I didn't have children, I wouldn't be able to function in life, I can tell you. So my children think it's a bit strange that I'm involved in something for which they think I'm completely ignorant. Um, and they're only 90% right. Um, I, I can actually open the emails. Um, but uh, so, but the, 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 whole, the whole of this project uh, with the internet is to actually get rid of those distances and those time zones and uh, the, the kind of insularity that used to be in the world when it took six months to get a ship from the UK to Australia or back. You know, that's gone now. And now you can talk with people in the UK. Talk to them um, any time, you know. So the internet is really the way to go for this kind of uh, collaborative process. The world is now small enough and, and we want this platform to be the connecting hub of researchers in clinical spinal cord injury uh, internationally, <clears throat> not just in Australia, and not just in Southeast Asia, our, our neighbouring countries, in New Zealand, but wherever people are interested in spinal cord research. And we need to collaborate, and this platform is just part of, you know, if you like, a bigger world collaboration which we need to work on developing. And this course plays a part in that too, of course, which is why it's so good that we're here today. So the big picture vision, if you like, is that this research hub will have researchers, which we're doing now, but it's actually a collaborative hub and that our next phase is to work with consumers and to bring in funders and uh, clinicians so that all those stakeholder groups are part of an international collaboration. You can't have uh, an international research study if you don't have people with spinal cord injury, any more than you can have it if with people with spinal cord injury but without the researcher. But you also need the funder, you also need the clinicians to be part of it. So this is part, the first step, if you like, or a small step in the bigger picture of international collaboration to do research that will have results to improve the lives of people with spinal cord injury. So I won't go into it any more because uh, Emma's going to show you how to do it, Emma and um, Gillian, and we will, Gillian, we will, um, we've got a friend whose name is Gillian and a friend who's called Gillian, that's the same name, but they pronounce them differently, so I get a bit confused. <laughs> uh, anyhow, so the aim is that they will give you some idea of actually how it works, and then we'll have a, an opportunity at the end for you to sign up, and then you can go away and explore it. And we want feedback, and we want people to join up. We want the hub advisory group to be the, the people who, who now work in it. So uh, this, is, this is your opportunity. Um, so I don't think I need to say any more other than this is the beginning. This should be the catalyst, the platinum catalyst for clinical research and we want you to be part of it and we want you to bring all the people you work with into that to be part of it too. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. We'll now hear from Bill Barrable, Chief Executive Officer of the Rick Hansen Institute. Bill has been influential in Canada in developing legislation, policies and procedures which champion health research and clinical practices. He's been involved in transplant technology, the rights of organ donors and funding scientific health research. 
In particular, he's highlighted the breaks in the research continuum that has impeded the progression of pilot studies to conclusive outcomes. His paper on the valleys of death also highlighted the large time lag between definitive scientific outcomes and applications to clinical practice. Please welcome Bill. Thank you, Judith, and, and, and thank you, Doug. Uh, it's a real honor for me to, uh, to be here and join you for this launch uh, this evening. Uh, I would like to point out that Doug is also a member of the Rick Hansen Institute board, as is uh, Dr. Graham Creasy, Graham from uh, Stanford. Uh, and they joined our board in part because of the philosophy and the values that, that they hold, which Doug already has expressed, which is, you know, the world doesn't have to be a zero-sum game. Uh, it doesn't have to be every man for himself. It can be we're all in this together, and that's how we look at it. And when I come and visit to Australia and New Zealand, I feel very much at home. Uh, I feel very welcomed, and I think it's because some of the shared values that we have uh, I, I really love coming here. Uh, and Joe Nunnally is here. Hi, Joe, from, from New Zealand. I noticed a number of other colleagues and friends from uh, Australia and New Zealand as well. Uh, and uh, it's a real pleasure to see you again, and I look forward to meeting some of the others later as well. Uh, Doug alluded to the, uh, the Praxis meeting that we held a couple of years ago. Speaking of being technologically challenged, I'm just trying to <laughs> open up my remarks, Doug. Uh, and, and that uh, was led by, by Dr. Creasy, Graham Creasy, uh, and uh, as well with support from a couple of, well, a number of our staff, including uh, Vanessa Noonan, Dr. Vanessa Noonan, who's here this evening, uh, as well as Christiana Chang. Um, you know, spinal cord injury is one of the most challenging survivable injuries experienced by a human being. However, despite research over the last 40 years, few have resulted in significant improvements for people living with spinal cord injury. Statistically speaking, we know that a significant cause of this is that a mere 14% of health-related scientific discoveries enter into medical practice, and it takes an average of 17 years for them to do so. It's a generational challenge, and that's not just spinal cord injury, that's across uh, research and science and, and translation. To compound the problem, the various transitions from moving a research idea through the translational research continuum are so fraught with obstacles that they are often referred to as uh, valleys of death. If we are to overcome these obstacles, then we need to come together to develop a coordinated and integrated approach to spinal cord injury that considers the entire lifespan of moving an idea from basic research to clinical research, often known as from bench to bedside, and from initial implementation to dissemination to the entire SCI community from bedside to worldwide. Two years ago, our organization, the Rick Hansen Institute, hosted an international conference called Praxis 2016, and that planning committee was led by, by Graham. The conference was designed to change the mold of a traditional scientific meeting by focusing on action and engaging a diverse group of participants. In that conference, we agreed that a paradigm shift is required to accelerate research from bench to bedside to worldwide. For us, the conference was a further catalyst to the momentum that was already building within the SCI research and clinical communities. There is much a much greater understanding that if we want to see significant progress in our lifetime, then we need to work together. Since then, several new collaborative efforts have been established to address the translational research problem. The product of one such effort is, of course, the spinal research, a spinal cord research hub. The hub's objective is to act as a platform that will help address the connectivity and collaborative research challenges and support the development of international multi-center studies. If we are serious about addressing these challenges in research, then I encourage all SCI researchers to visit the Hub's website and find out for yourself how we can work together to truly make a difference in the lives of people with spinal cord injury. In the past 40 years, we've seen little change in the realization of, of cures. In the next 10, 
Let's work together so that we can look back on these activities as milestones on our journey toward a world without paralysis after spinal cord injury. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Our second guest speaker is Dr. Giorgio Chivaletto from the Foundation Santa Lucia in Italy. Giorgio is also the chairman of the Scientific Committee of ISCOS and head of the rehabilitation section of the Italian Society of Spinal Cord. Giorgio has worked with spinal cord injury patients and their rehabilitation for many years. His research has led to the publication of numerous papers in national and international research journals. Currently, his particular focus is on spinal cord lesions. Please welcome Dr. Giorgio Chivaletto. <clears throat> Thank you very much for this invitation. And please forgive my English, first of all. <clears throat> it's, uh, I'm very pleased to be at the lunch of SCORE and honored to be part of the advisory group of uh, this effort. And I strongly believe that SCORE represents uh, a great opportunity and uh, uh, collaboration for global SCR research. To explain why it is so important to me, let me tell a little bit of uh, my personal experience with spinal cord research. I began my research activity in the early 90s with the epidemiological study <coughs> on Italian spinal cord injury. And that was my first and my last experience for a long while of a collaborative study. And uh, then for a long while, I went on uh, recording my own data and examining my own data. A few years ago, I, met, I joined the EMSCI, the European Multicenter uh, Spinal Cord Injury Study Group. And my research activity changed quite dramatically because now I have access to the data of uh, about more than 15 uh, uh, research centers all around uh, Europe and uh, probably in the future all around, around the world. <coughs> despite this, and despite my age and my uh, research activity, I still don't know uh, exactly what's going on in Italy and most of all what's going on in the rest of the world. In, the, in terms of uh, spinal cord injury research. And although I'm the chair of the scientific committee of, uh, of ISCOS. And that's why SCORE could represent uh, a game changer in, this, uh, uh, in the research uh, activity. Because it represents <coughs> a virtual place where uh, established a new researcher can meet together and uh, uh, um, develop a, a common research project where, uh, with a sufficient number of patients or subjects to reach uh, uh, significance, or, uh, uh, for example, compare uh, um, health system, different health system uh, for spinal cord injury, or simply ask uh, suggestions or, uh, or mentorships. <clears throat> um, or, to or simply to enter in contact with colleagues with the same, uh, with the same interest. And launching uh, uh, the score, uh, score uh, in parallel with, with uh, uh, the ISCOS scientific meeting seems to me more than appropriate because ISCOS is supposed to uh, support uh, uh, research on spinal cord injury all over the world. And that's why I, I uh, asked the chair of the scientific committee, I asked the uh, ISCOS executive to support the, this initiative and with a positive uh, uh, reply, of course. Therefore, I, will, I strongly uh, encourage each of you and I will strongly encourage uh, each researcher that I, I know to join the uh, joint score and began to interact and collaborate and discover the possibilities that uh, uh, SCORE could offer to all of us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Giorgio. 
We've heard a bit about the difficulties facing people with spinal cord injury, and now we're going to learn a bit about SCORE. Emma Peleg is our SCORE project manager, and Dr Gillian Hilton, occupational therapist at Austin Health, is a test user of SCORE for a qualitative study. Emma has worked as an ICU nurse, and fortunately she's now turned her talents to project management of the build of SCORE. Gillian's research is focused on employment and spinal cord injury, and together they will present the platform. Please welcome Emma and Gillian. Thank you. So SCORE is the global collaboration platform to unite the research, uh, the spinal cord research sector. We're actually, uh, our main aim is to transform research culture in spinal cord injury, moving from a local to a global focus. So the use of technology to bring people together and collaborate is not new. Um, there are non-academic platforms such as LinkedIn and Google Communities, and there's academic platforms like ResearchGate, which have brought people together from a wide array of professions and areas of interest. SCORE is dedicated to spinal cord injury research. Ultimately, the SCORE platform will support a broader group within the spinal cord research sector. Um, as Doug has mentioned, those people living with spinal cord injury, funders, clinicians, but our initial focus has been on the researcher and we're introducing the researcher platform to you today. As Doug has also mentioned, our advisory group, many of which are here today, were formed over a year and a half ago and they've been surveyed uh, for key priority areas, they have been involved in testing and feedback of the platform. And we were able to prioritise these areas and feed them back to the software developers, eResearch. Welcome to SCORE. I'm going to hand over to Gillian Hilton, who will give us a bit of an overview of how she's used the platform in the test phase and how her group will use it going forward now that we're live. Thank you, Emma. Uh, that's not, oh, Marnie, nice profile. Thank you, Marnie. Um, so I'm leading a research study, thanks to uh, SCORE and S SRI, across multiple sites here in Australia and New Zealand. And my group's collaboration and, and um, my collaborators, some of which are in the room, has been facilitated by the use of, of the SCORE platform. We started off by registering for the platform once we'd signed up. We logged into our accounts, we, and then we started building our profiles, just as Marnie has done beautifully here. One of the key features of SCORE is the interest areas. So by, by selecting key interest areas, um, it's a feature that then allows a connection to the right people, um, the people that you want to connect with around your community. So for example, I would have entered vocational rehab, um, translational practice um, and rehabilitation. When a researcher logs into the platform, they're taken to a dashboard that provides them a summary of recent activity that's occurred since they last logged in. So recent groups that were formed, recent conversations that were, put up, that were posted on the platform and new members that have joined the community. Um, so, and also a calendar of events related to spinal cord research. Another feature is the groups and meeting space. So I was able to create a group of my study where we could discuss, chat, uh, post updates, upload documents and share some ideas. The feature of this is that we can also, uh, feature of this is to link directly to the meeting space. So we can set up meeting times with the group um, a particularly important feature when we're working across international time zones. Ultimately, SCORE is an, a, a platform to build your spinal cord dedicated research profiles and networks. It's a place where you can join conversations, start your own conversations, progress your ideas, 
uh, progress your research and find people with the same interest area in your specialty. If you're a researcher, come and sign up now. Thank you. Thank you, Gillian and Emma. Now, just behind me while I'm talking, Christine's going to do some little work with computers. We're aiming to assist researchers in their work to improve the lives of people who live with spinal cord injury. We now have a very important message from someone who understands the potential of research at first hand. One of our ambassadors, Dr Mario de Cruz, works as a mentor to people who have recently sustained a spinal cord injury. He was surgical registrar at the Austin Hospital in Melbourne when he had an accident which caused his C5 quadriplegia. You'll understand that he's softly spoken as a result of the respiratory consequences of his cord damage. Christine. My name is Dr. Mario de Cruz from Melbourne, Victoria. Almost 20 years ago, whilst working as a registrar at the Austin Hospital in Melbourne, I incurred my spinal cord injury as a result of a car accident. My name is Dr. Dr. Mario de Cruz from Melbourne, Victoria. My life was changed for Almost 20 years ago, I'm now a whilst working as a registrar at the Austin Hospital. When I first heard about I the school, I was very encouraged as a result of because in the 20 years I had a bigger body injury. I have my life has changed uh, very involved and heard I'm now a researcher in this area. When I do search about duplication in this area, I was very encouraged as a platform like this is school year is perfect to allow researchers to communicate with each other to avoid duplication in this area and heard a platform like this school is also really important because I do know there's a lot of duplication in this area. Data comes from that research school and even other research in the world allow researchers to participate in the trial. To avoid in many areas that are often difficult to find. Our was was also really important in the trial. trial. Good when data researchers can communicate to a platform like this. Good research involves lots of our collaboration trial. can become in many areas it's key to not having large large trial numbers of people to enroll in the trial. This is why it's when so important to me. Researchers can communicate to Taking two, like three, four of years of collaboration with research with outcomes. The will make an enormous impact to try the life of someone like me. This, this is why it's so important to me. Get involved in two, three, sign up, years, and start collaborating. Research out for Thank you. I think uh, the only thing left to say is thank you for coming again. Don't think you can get out of here without signing up. Uh, no, I'm serious. Um, please sign up if you're a researcher or a clinician. Uh, please get involved. Please meet people. And thank you once again for coming and thank you for the, everyone who's worked together to make it happen. And I uh, look forward to catching up with you a little bit more during the meeting. But also make sure you meet up with the team. And so they'll be manning the stations to, for you to sign up and uh, I hope to see you signing up. Thank you.